Hey guys, Logan here from What's With Magazine. This is the editor. If you watch any of our stuff, you know that I'm not in our normal TV studio, nor am I in our photo studio. Nope, just like the rest of the world, we are on our, what do we call it, self-quarantine with our dogs and kind of hanging out in our own shops and our own houses for the next couple weeks and for the last week. Uh, and to be honest with you, kind of sucks working from home, but fear we break it up and do a little video. Uh, I will do a shop tour here in the next couple of days. I think I'm gonna have a lot of time on my hands, so we'll go ahead and get that done sometime then. Uh, but first, I wanna get this guy set up. Uh, this, Gerald Bailey, is my new table saw. Uh, so I just went ahead and picked up a uh, Saw Stop 3 Horse uh, PCS, the professional cabinet saw. Um, last Thursday, and it is Monday. Uh, this thing's been in the box for a couple of days at my house, which if you ask my wife, that's impossible for me because I love to open everything as soon as I get it. But I knew I wanted to do a quick video on assembling it and seeing what's going on in here. So let's get into it and I'll show you how this thing goes together. All right, so I have this thing on a moving dolly. Uh, the guys over at the Woodsmith store where I bought this, no relation anymore to the magazine, interestingly enough. Uh, they loaded it into my truck on the pallet that this is still sitting on uh, with a forklift. And then I went ahead and unloaded it with my tractor. Um, I had some clamp on forks for the bucket. And after a little bit of finagling, I got it out of there, drove it around to my slider, turned it 90 degrees hot dog style so it would fit through the sliding glass door. And then I just dropped it on this, uh, this moving dolly, one of those just little cheap uh, four wheel moving dollies from Harbor Freight. And I was able to wheel it in here. Uh, it's heavy, but it's not that heavy. I think the overall uh, weight on the saw once it's assembled is about 500 pounds. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it is manageable on the dolly with one person. Uh, but the guys at the store did tell me, once I open this up, the saw is laying on its side right now. Uh, Saw Stop currently, when I bought this, has a deal going on where you can choose either a mobile base, uh, the integrated mobile base, or a dust collection arm. Uh, I have a dust collection hood in here already from my previous saw, so I went ahead and got the mobile base. Uh, so when I opened this up, uh, the guys at the store told me to make sure to put the base on first because then you can stand it up and it's already on the base. You can just roll it around as you assemble it. So let's go ahead and get this cut open and see what's inside. Okay, so right now the saw is on its side. Uh, looks like this is probably the right hand side. Um, so this would be the back and the top's over here. I'm gonna pull all this junk off the bottom. It looks like it is like the motor cover. Um, looks like we have some other accessories in here. Um, pull this all out so I can get that mobile base in place. But first, I'm gonna open the directions. All right, so all the hardware is labeled. Uh, that's super helpful. Um, then you're not really asking, what is that 5 8 inch bolt? Is this 5 8 inch or is it a half inch? Oh, well, those, are, those are cast iron. Ugh. So the, there's the big box that comes with the saw. Then there's four or five other little boxes, um, one of which is the fence, uh, one of which is the fence rails. Um, there is a extension wing for uh, the far right hand side of the saw. Uh, and then the mobile base. Um, I'm hoping that there are uh, some instructions in here on how to attach this to the saw. And there are. Look it, we got it. You aren't very much help. Wow. 
when you guys assemble something, you probably do what I do. And just look at my pictures. Like, as an editor, I feel like you should read the words, or I should read the words. But I don't. I just look at the pictures. <laughs> Okay, so the mobile base is on. Uh, basically, it's fairly simple. Uh, there's an axle, a couple of wheels, uh, there's some linkages to a pair of pedals up front, and a pair of wheels in the back, and then these guys swivel. And everything goes together pretty easily with uh, either bolts and washers and lock washers, or lock washers, washers, and nuts. Uh, so everything's bolted together, I think. There's no reason that I can't stand this up now. So let's try it. Well, that's not how we do it. There we go. Oh, and I got oil all over my shoes. <laughs> So there's two boxes in there. Uh, I have the box that has the extension wing surface, and then this box actually has the fence in it. Uh, I'm assuming the hardware's in here, so we'll open that guy. Wave, wave. <laughs> All right, can you go play? Can you go play? Hulk, oh, there. Yep, can you go play?
Okay. Let's get I think it goes like that. Pro tip, when you're leveling the extension wings on your table saw, don't have it sitting on the wheels because you'll be fighting it and when you drop it down, it'll be perfect. So, lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you guys head out? Yeah. All right, so there we go. Nothing terribly crazy uh, putting this saw together. A um, couple things I like about the assembly process, at least with the saw stop. Um, the saw stop does a very nice job on uh, giving you very clear instructions, and I love their uh, their little hardware packs. Uh, everything's color coded. Uh, it, everything's labeled. Uh, the only issue I had there is a couple of the washers had slipped through the package uh, and were floating around with the other hardware. Uh, not a big deal. But overall, assembly went really well. Uh, it took probably, you know, granted I'm filming this, uh, probably four hours to put together. Um, the hardest part, honestly, was getting this extension uh, leveled. But I think that's kind of my fault because I had it up on the wheels. Um, when I dropped it down, everything seemed to settle much better. Um, and I'll come back. Uh, I have, you know, I have a straight edge, uh, one of the Veritas ground straight edges, and I'll come back and re-verify this now that I kind of have this in place. Um, but there is a couple of other things I'm going to have to do. Uh, my previous saw was a Steel City. Uh, it was the horse and three-quarter model, and it was fine. Um, it worked. It worked fine. Uh, it was a hybrid model uh, so it was kind of a light weight cabinet saw um, but it had a long fence on it and 
It obviously was a little taller uh, because my outfeed table, which is just the Craig base um, with a uh, two layer thick MDF top that I put some plastic laminate on um, and then edged it, uh, is a little, uh, it's a little too tall, which sucks because it's loaded down with a lot of crap uh, and my feet are out of uh, adjustment so I can't go any lower on it. So I'm actually gonna have to pull each one of the legs apart individually and lower the entire thing, um, but not that big a deal. Um, let's talk a little bit real quick uh, why I decided on the saw stop. Um, we use the saw stops in our magazine shop. A couple of years ago, probably th going on three years ago, uh, we had a small accident. Uh, you know, you can ask Dylan about that. Um, don't ask him to give you a thumbs up, but uh, you can ask him about that. Uh, but we replaced them all with saw stops. Um, and they're honestly, they're a very, very well-built saw. Aside from the safety features, um, they're a super nice saw. Now, the safety feature is probably one of the biggest reasons I bought the saw and one of the biggest reasons, honestly, why my wife allowed me to buy the saw. Because, uh, I mean, they are expensive. Uh, this is the three horse PCS. I think with the mobile base out the door with taxes, it was like $3,200. Um, but because my shop is in my basement, you know, I'm sure you guys on this video saw my kids coming in and out of here. They're in here all the time. They know not to touch the tools, but they're getting to that age where they can do everything themselves, or at least so they think. So uh, I, I'll keep the saw unplugged, but uh, my son has shown more and more interest in coming into the shop with me. So I figured uh, not a terrible investment. Um, yes, it is expensive, but you know, not a terrible investment because this is probably a saw that I'm going to have forever. Um, let's talk about funding one of these real quick. So when I decided I wanted to save up for a saw stop, um, there's three main sources uh, that I was uh, looking at as far as being able to pay for it. The first was selling my saw. So uh, I sold my Steel City, I think, for 700 bucks. Um, it had a router insert in the wing and everything uh, with a lift in it. Um, so that was a large portion of it. I, uh, Phil and myself both teach out at the Woodsmith store here in Des Moines. Uh, and I had some credit there from doing those seminars. Uh, and then, you know, my little side hustle that I enjoy is uh, selling, buying and selling hand tools. Uh, so I buy, you know, hand planes that are vintage, uh, you know, old Stanleys and either just flip them uh, without touching them or clean them up, tune them up, uh, and then sell them. Uh, it really depends on what the market's doing, uh, but um, it's, at least for me, as somebody that's been doing it for a while, it's pretty easy for me to uh, see something and know what I can sell it for. Um, so as long as I can usually double my money, I'll grab it. Uh, so it took a while. You know, I've been saving up for the saw for about a year now. Um, it's been a long year selling tools on eBay, uh, but that's how I funded it, you know. Yeah, it's a nice saw, um, you know, and working with the magazine, we get the, we have the privilege of working with tools like this almost every day. Uh, but purchasing one and putting it in our own shop is something a little different um, because that's not something we always get to do. Uh, so it was a fun journey uh, to get it picked up, assembled, show you guys, uh, and you know, we're all stuck at home right now, so might as well do something in our own shop. Uh, so my next steps with this guy are gonna be to get my outfeed table dropped down. Uh, I'm gonna have to route my miter slots. I didn't route my miter slots in uh, the outfeed table uh, because I knew I would be picking up the saw stop at some point, so I didn't want to uh, have a bunch of different sets of miter slots routed in there. Um, so I'll drop that guy down. I'll probably come through and do a, a tune up on this uh, saw. Everything I've heard about the saw stops is right out of the package. Uh, they're built really well, which they are. Um, just assembling it and how easily everything went together and how easily everything operates right now. Um, you know, I'm not terribly concerned about it, but I'll check the blade run out um, with a uh, dial indicator uh, and I might do some final leveling of these wings and everything now that it's in final position. So I think that's all I have. Uh, Look forward to making a few more videos in my shop. Um, hopefully we can get Phil and the other guys to do the same because uh, it's kind of fun. We might be stuck in our shops for a while. So we'll bring a little bit of our shop to you guys. See you next time.